I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Old School Bodybuilding Clothing Company. If leg day was yesterday, and now you're wondering why toilets are so damn low, you are definitely old school. If you're the only athlete at your gym that knows there's a contest today, and it's to see who trains the hardest, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. I love it. Welcome back to After Hours. Very special birthday edition. I will be uh, 53 years old. Wednesday, I don't know when this airs. It'll probably air on a Wednesday, so or Thursday. But um, I want to wish myself a happy birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> and welcome, <laughs> and welcome back. Are you, are you that worried we're gonna forget? No, I mean, no, 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 I'm not. But uh, <laughs> I think I might forget. I'm convinced that I'm gonna get my biopsy results from my thyroid back on my birthday. That's like uh, I'm hoping it's gonna be a very good birthday uh, notification. Of course it is. We, we pr I, I prayed on it. Happy birthday. Thank you. you. just got to put it out of your mind, David. You just, I know. I'm so happy that I'm in warm. I'm so happy I'm in warm Florida because you know what? My, you, you know Ricky Moten, IFBB pro Ricky Moten. Ricky Moten um, not only competes as a pro, a very good one at that. He also has bought snakes for me. I, sell, I sold him a few pythons. And they have no electricity. They got a major snowstorm down in Texas. Um, so he's freaking out because the snakes, you know, need... You know, heat, basically. So we went to Walmart. I told him to get some heat packs, you know, the, you know those 24, 48 hour heat packs you can kind of put in there. And he said it's a one to two hour wait just to get into Walmart. Can you believe it? People are losing their mind, you know. And Where I guess does they, he live? He lives in Texas. Texas. There's a reason oh, Texas. why. Texas. There's a reason why why there's no electric there. Why? Yeah, because you're fucking they air things. For Obama was in office. They tried, they, they, they wanted to switch all the energy to su supposedly leave no carbon footprint or whatever, but it, it doesn't work with those <laughs> turbines. The, right. the, they have these billion dollar thing, billion dollar energy electric output of coal uh, things in plants. The windmills. There's impact. a snowstorm. The, the, the electric lines are down, George. I don't think, I don't think no, that no, 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 no. The windmills Dave, 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 Dave. The windmills. Dave, let me finish what I'm going right. to tell you. Listen to candidate hey. Mr. J. Hey, Tyler is fact-checking here right office. now. He's running for office. He knows what hey. he's talking about. He's running. Let me, let me finish. Okay. What happened is, as a result, those 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 wind turbines, windmills, uh, windmills could not supply energy 600 miles away. And when it's cold, they freeze. Right? Oh, They're yeah? not efficient at all. Well, the only people who, who benefit from it are the ones who build it. All right? The rest of people can't. They had their own plants that they built, right? They, they use coal, and the coal puts out carbon dioxide and oxygen into the air. Carbon dioxide is what we need, all right, to survive on, the, on this planet. And water vapors. For the oxygen. plant. That's what's put out. They, so as a result, they shut it down, and this is what you have. This is happening all around the planet, all right? That's yes. what they're trying to do. Well, I don't know so if they have the, I'm sure they have some wind turbine. I can't imagine that's the only power supply in no. Texas. No, 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 they're, they're no good. They showed him yesterday. They had these so fucking good. drones shooting fucking <laughs> the same shit they put on a, a propeller of an airplane to try to uh, de-ice them. They're yeah. frozen solid. But is that the only few any energy source they have there? Yes. Yes. Right now, that's their They don't have thing. gas pl plants that running. They have a natural gas grid. Tyler says they have the a natural, natural gas, gas grid. They, they don't want to use the natural. Which is also Everything frozen. is frozen. Yeah, Even if uh, the water turbines are frozen. Right. Well, I mean, that's what happens when, during a snowstorm. Things had go wrong. Now, 
I told him, I said, Ricky, you have three snakes. You don't have 300 like I do. I said, wrap them in a bag and tape them to your body. You'll keep them warm. I said, <laughs> problem solved. So, now, Mr. There G, you are go. you running for office? Is that what you told us before the show? Uh, wait well, a minute, wait a minute. You can't skip over that. Oh. The guy gets a bag with three snakes and puts it in his shirt, then what? I, mean, well, <laughs> I told him to keep it until the other he goes back up. to that. <laughs> Put yeah. him in his crotch. Put him right by his balls. That's why. I there you go. Him. They'll think it's another snake. <laughs> <laughs> They'll mate with his penis. The good thing about warm-blooded mammals like us is that we don't get, we don't need heat. We can we can generate our own heat. So yeah, but that's the beginning of a joke. Imagine like okay, a guy walks into a bar with a bag with three pythons, and throws it on the bar. That's the beginning of a great joke. We gotta get we we. I got news to you. I have a friend. I have a friend. He's one of the most well-known uh, boa constrictor breeders in the world, Pete Call. And Pete used to have this leucistic, which is a white snake with black eyes, leucistic cobra. But it was de it was devenomized. Like they had removed the venom glands. And he would bring it. He used to like to drink. He would go to bars. And if anyone would bre you know, break his balls, he'd have it in his car. He'd go out there and he'd, he'd bring it in and he'd take it out and throw it on the bar. And the thing would hood up and people would like lose their mind. Because, you know, it's not just a snake. A cobra can kill you. You know, that's a venomous snake. But no one knew that it was de devenomized and he would freak people out all the time and do crazy Until shit. Until like one that. day a guy shot the fucking snake. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> not a lupo. You don't do that in Texas. Lot. Yeah, they'll shoot the snake. Exactly. Them, you know? So wait, did he take the fangs out too, or just the glands? No, they took the, the venom glands. He still had his fangs, but you know, you know, you're not gonna die if you get bit by it. A cobra, though, you see. A, I would, I would. I'm a snake guy. I'm running if I see a cobra. You know, I'm not hanging around. You know, I don't want to die. I, I got to tell you a cobra story. Yeah. This is this is terrific. I haven't thought of this in years. So when we moved upstate New York from the city, yeah, there was there was this. There was this place called the Montfort Reptile Institute. I've heard of it. And it was a little white shack on the side of the highway. And we used to pass by it all the time. And, you know, didn't know what it was. So my mother is scared to death of snakes. And my father, the psychiatrist, thinks that, you know, the best way to, you know, to, <laughs> her to come over, get over this fear is to confront it. Right. And realize that snakes are not slimy and slithery, right. but they're actually, you know, dry. And they're, you know, kind of all this whatever, you know, dispel all the, you know, the, the, the nefarious image she has of these things. So the Montfort Reptile Institute turns out is this big, huge snake place that's got all these different snakes. Biggest one in, in, in Dutchess County or upstate New York or whatever. So... My father rounds up the family. We get in the Jeep. We go down there. We go to the, the Reptile Institute. And in this big box, uh, you know, glass box, cage, aquarium, in the middle is a cobra. And, and, and there's you know, snakes all over the place in, in, in you know, aquariums. The cobra is the, the main attraction. because It's a big-ass cobra. It's like six feet long. It's King big, cobra, probably, yeah. Cobra. King cobra. And the cobra hates the guy who owns the place. And whenever the guy walked by, there's like five, 10 people in there, all, and the snake is and the snake is like, you know, like kind of just moving around. As soon as the owner, the guy that he hates walks by, the snake like rears up, he's just pecking at the glass and shit, hates the fucking guy, yeah. right? So it just so happens the light bulb is out in the, in the, in the aquarium and they're gonna change it. And the guys running the place say, oh, this is a perfect opportunity for you know you guys you know on the tour to see how do we you know handle the snakes when we got to do something like reach in there and you know change a light right. bulb. So they get the net out and the head thing and whatever, right? And this, and like I said, the snake hates this fucking guy. So he he gets in there with the pole and the thing and the net and he sticks then he sticks the net. And I know he's got one guy holding the, the snake's head down with the net and this like fork thing and. Whatever, and he's got his arm in there. He reaches in, and he's unscrewing the light bulb, and all of a sudden, the snake pops his head out from underneath oh. the thing, and the guy yanks his arm out. And the, my mother's standing there, her eyeballs are yeah. freaking blowing out of her head, <laughs> traumatized, it's like the exorcist now, yeah. just walking down the stairs, you know. And then the, the the guy slams the cage, the door, the wood door on the back of the aquarium. He slams it so hard out of fear, he blows it off the hinges. Oh no and way! Now, 
<laughs> and then he, he grabs it, he puts it in the snake's like stick and half with my mother. Is like, <laughs> is, she's like, she's I just remember her, she had her purse way the hell up here. Yeah. And she's running, running out of there back to the car. Oh she's, my God. She's, she's, she's I don't want to with the purse. It was like protecting her. Yeah. And she's, you know, using her bag. She's in the Jeep with her friend and the door shut. She goes, I'm not going to. Was it a snakeskin there. purse? What's that? Was it a snakeskin purse? <laughs> no. So she was traumatized even more after that, right? Oh, that was it. It was. T- it was. She was just never again. That was. That she was done. The funny that. thing is that when you handle a venomous snake, the first thing you do is you take. The, 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 this is protocol. You take it out. In other words, you 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 get the snake hook. You take it out. You put it into a like a garbage pail with a lid. You cover that, and once it's secure, then you go into the cage and you and you service the cage. That that's a that's rule number one on on venomous you know handling. You never well, stick your hand in the cage. You know they, they made this rule after these two. Oh, probably. Right. Because, <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, you know there's a, there's a there's a if you pull up Tyler uh, Tyler Nolan or you know what Chandler's World Chandler's World uh, YouTube channel. This guy has millions of followers, John. What he does is he. He just hand, free handles cobras and stuff like that. He's a nutcase. There's a couple guys out there doing it. Now, they've been handling snakes their whole life, but you know what? All it takes is these snakes to one day not be in a good mood, and they bite him, and the guy dies. One of the guys, Tyler Nolan, actually lost the, not Tyler, the, the producer, uh, the, the, the creator, Tyler Nolan lost a finger, okay? He got bitten. The venom ate through his finger, basically. Oh. But isn't it amazing that this snake recognized this guy? I mean, he oh yeah, they well, king cobras. King cobras are the most uh, uh, intelligent snakes probably in the world. Don't they, they know, recognize with scent, Dave? Don't they? they no, they, it, their vision. It? Cobras have very good vision. They're not like scent I people. I think it was they, their scent. Dude, he picked this guy out of ten people. No, they, they, they have like, awesome he, vision. Like attack in the glass. He wanted. <laughs> Get out of here. You bite the guy a million times. Yeah. You know, now, he doesn't like the way he's handled. Yeah. When that door blew off the hinges, man, my, that was, that was. The- was your, did your mother give your father a lot of shit? In oh, car, like- oh my God. The whole way home. It ah. was, and, and he was, <laughs> he was, and, and all the rest of the day too. But she was like, she was fuming going back and forth. Did we your father fuck with it? Like get a rubber snake and throw it in the fucking. No, like, <laughs> no, you don't do that. <laughs> you, that's how you no, get divorced, no, Greg. That's well, divorced. Then, then you know what happened one day <laughs> about, about a, the next summer, we're walking down. We lived on this, you know, farm. We're walking down the, the, the country road in front of the house, and my father sees this something moving over there, and he says to my mother, "Go, go up, go up the road, run up the, the walk." And he, he, it was a black snake, about eight feet long. It was the biggest thing I ever saw in my wow. life. It was, huge. it was probably an indigo. Yeah, it was huge. We had to put it in a bag and freaking take it somewhere else because. Dude, I was at Bob Bonham's house, and Dan Duchesne was actually there, and Bob had a, I don't know, somehow or other snake was in his house, and Bob stomped on it and killed it. it you know, it was a pretty big snake. I, I mean, I don't know in what New kind Jersey. of snake it was. What, where did he get a snake in, in New Jersey from, you know? I swear to God, it, it, it he stomped on it and on the head, and fucking he killed it, but he was, you Dan know. Dan did or he, Bob Bonham did? No, Bob Bonham did, uh, but... Uh, What's his name? We're staying over. Dan, Dan, Dan took the, the, the GH out of the snake's uh, pituitary. Well, wait, 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 whose snake was it? It was a snake. I don't know. And he was bringing in garbage bags or something like that. And I think it was from outside. Oh. You know what the funniest thing Might was? Have been you know what the funny? I was in the fucking, and DeShane went to go to bed, right? And I'm sitting in the fucking kitchen and I'm talking to Bob. And, uh, you know, DeShane looked all disheveled and everything like that. So I was talking mad shit about him. And I didn't know it. <laughs> he came back down. And he was standing right behind me. Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah, bro. I felt this fucking big. He, he was he was very good about it. He was like, yo, oh, don't worry about it. You know what? You know. But I was like, dude, what's with him? Look at his fucking hair and shit. <laughs> don't comb that shit. You know, look like he combed his hair with a pork chop. You know what I mean? Was, like, You're like, lucky he didn't like inject you with something, Greg. You know, <laughs> dude. I was I was so fucking mortified. I I felt like. And that's happened to me a million times. In like my Bob life. Gruskin. About huh? Grus- Bob Gruskin. Remember oh, Gruskin? Oh, uh, no. Gr- Gruskin had no hair. He only had hair on the sides. I remember he, yeah. <laughs> we were just talking was about Bob Gruskin the, on the other show. When- he hey, just passed speaking away, of you know anacondas, that, right? how come you didn't mention me? I'm the most famous anaconda. 
<laughs> Remember Derek Anthony? Oh. Uh. Derek used to yeah. call his penis his anaconda. Anaconda, remember? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he died so young then, 20, I mean, how old was he, 28? 31, I think. 31. 31. Yeah. And Just Dave, 31. how did he actually, Dave, did he, how did he actually die? Did he, it was it because. I think he, he from kidney and liver failure, yeah. Hey, but, but what, what aspirated? What, high what high blood it? pressure that he ignored. Yeah, I think high blood pressure was the main thing, and pro- abuse of anabolic steroids definitely for his liver. He had he's taking cysts. that shit when you got fucking kidney problems. Did you keep taking shit because you want to be jacked? Yeah. That's what happens. Is though. that is that like the pro bodybuilder guy that was on the show last a uh, couple weeks ago? Who? Same similar situation. Oh, he's somebody? talking about Boston. Boston's Light. not a pro yeah. bodybuilder. No, Boston's got some some you know some kidney issues that you know may or may not have been induced by anabolics. I think it's because he took some, he said he, it's because he took some kind of peptide that was uh, kidney toxic. So I don't know, you know, but he's, you know, he's got to be careful too with himself because he can get carried away. But that's oh, another show. Can, can get carried that, away? That's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a, well, carried, yeah, he, away, yeah. carried away is what he sets out to do that's every true. day when he gets that's out true. of bed. That's Listen, like saying, that's like saying get Jimmy Bull could get like a little perturbed right. about things. It's saying Jimmy Bull can get up, can get upset. I'm drinking Dave's amino acid drink right there. Yeah, me too. I'm drinking Dave. Dave does your amino acid. Nice. And George is cookie. Good stuff. Look, ah. George's cookie and where's my cookies, acid. George? They're being, they're being I was today. just about to. He ask sent me a picture of it. I, I haven't got it. I know, Dave. I, I saw uh, I saw shipping label. He showed me shipping yeah. labels with my name on yeah, it. Yeah. That was like two months ago. No, that was last They're week. They're going to be invalid. In, in, in I have week. so many. Look, I have so many other orders I got to put together. Um, I'm, and I'm George, one of my I'm friends wants to come buy a now, whole John. bunch from you. I don't know if you got it. My friend Turnpike Mike. It, yeah, I he, said him already. Yeah. By, by oh, the he, way, he wants, by the way, Jimmy the Bull has another kidney stone. He just passed. Uh-oh. Oh, is that why he's not answering yeah. his phone? Yeah, I think so. That- he was gonna go. He was gonna go to the vet's hospital. The uh, but he said that it was so cold that he didn't want to leave the house. So he was basically huddled in his bed until I guess he pe- he, so that he was- sent me this picture. I, I thought <laughs> like it was like a picture of like you know like he he like mistook or something like that. It was actually a picture of the stone. It looked like I <laughs> it looked like a like a boulder that he passed through his his. Uh, <laughs> Why does that always happen to him? What is he's got change his Because he's hot dogs. That's he's why I told him stop at the hot dogs already. Nah, you nice know what it is? It's genetic, though. There's a lot of people that eat that shit. <clears throat> hot dogs acidify. He's probably got the worst chemistry in his body of all time. You can't eat hot dogs for every meal, you know? My son tried it, believe me. <laughs> well, hold on. What about getting angry? What about getting if you get, if you get angry? You... He's never angry. Yeah. <laughs> do you know why? Hot, the steam do you know so why it's hot dogs? Do you know why? Do you understand why? No. Because you don't need to wash a dish. You just you right. put the hot dog in the butt, you wrap it in a paper towel, and you put it in a microwave, yeah. you eat the hot dog, you throw the paper towel away, you don't got to wash a dish. He so, likes to go to those trucks, though, John, where they have all the relish and all the other crap they put on it. You know, No that's... dish you got to wash there either. And the, and, and, <laughs> I've seen them dirty water dogs. I've seen them not yeah. knock it down too foot long dogs with everything on it i I've, I've never seen him eat that much food before i said jimmy i've never seen you eat this much food he goes i love hot dogs show us the kidney stone I, oh I, you want to see the fucking like, kidney stone oh, there, there he is, is. Come on. there he is show Hold me the on. kidney stone jimmy you must Hold have on. a bag of you must have a bag of sand by now with all the fucking i'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> cash i'm gonna cash them in Hold on, let me get it for you. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> they were fucking gold. You'd be a millionaire right by now. <laughs> there he is. By the way, could you imagine? Well, could you imagine if our bodies created gold instead of fucking? Uh, oh pepper? shit! I was just gonna say, by, like, <laughs> yeah, pearls. We should be we pearls. Out. Why can't you get a reward for passing a kidney stone? Yeah. You gotta. <laughs> they should be pearls, like uh, oysters produced when they were right, something, right? You yeah. know. All right, pearls. I, something worth before some money. Jimmy comes back for there my birthday. Is. We're having a birthday sale at speciesnutrition.com. Somalize. If you guys ha- have trouble sleeping at night, if you guys are not getting enough melatonin in your in your diet or in your supplement re- regime, and we know melatonin is absolutely essential if you get COVID, at getting over it quicker. Um, this also has GABA. This will help you fall asleep better. It'll keep you asleep better. We're doing twenty nine ninety nine. You know why we're doing twenty nine ninety nine? Because I don't. I am not one iota 
Not one day over the age of 29. I will be 29 years old <laughs> on Wednesday. So $29.99 for Somalize. And if you spend more than $60, you can get a free Species Nutrition t-shirt. If you spend more than $100, you'll also get free shipping. So check out that sale. Dave, you're, the only one in, you're the only one in his 50s. We're all fucking in our 60s. I know. Can I'm I telling you. You're like a kid. When you get can I hawk my, wait, can I hawk my book now? Yes, after, in one second. When you pass the age of 40, this is serious though, your yes, body's please. melatonin production decreases so severely, you would be shocked. And melatonin is what you know, basically tells your body it's nighttime and, and to sleep and to stay asleep. Um, a lot of people notice as they get older, they don't get good quality of sleep anymore. Even if they, if they lay in bed long enough, they're just not getting that quality of sleep. And uh, they have trouble falling asleep. They're, they're, their time clocks are off. Melatonin is, one of the, melatonin is one of the best anti-aging hormones. It's also, like I said, really, really effective against COVID because COVID shuts down melatonin production in the body. But Dave, yeah. can, can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. I'm one of the few, I don't know. I If I take melatonin, I can't sleep. It makes me restless. Like yeah. I get like restless leg syndrome where I can't sleep. I can't. I, the opposite of everything. Now, it's not you know what, what the fuck is that? Why I'll, is that? Now, you know why? Because first of all, you get slightly weird dreams on melatonin. You got to combine it with GABA. GABA and melatonin together are like, it's like yeah. Decker and testosterone. You, you know, it's, it, there's a synergism there that just you can't um, you can't measure. So I'll you're send you a bottle. I get restless. I will send push. you a bottle. You do three pills 15 minutes before you go to bed, and I'm telling you, you're going to get the best night's sleep of your life. You know, it, pilots, it, 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 pilots, it, it, pilots use melatonin to help o him overcome jet lag. Jet lag, absolutely. When I travel like to the Middle East or, or Australia, I <clears> take three pills right before bed, and it resets your, your, your biorhythmic clock, basically. Yep. But did you ever hear that? Am I the only idiot that fucking gets like restless from that shit? I like, do the, too. Well, because I the do. melatonin you you're taking is yeah. actually crystal meth. That's why you know. You're I don't like the way I don't like the way it makes me feel. I don't I, like feeling. I don't like. Very feeling nice, like, George. You look what? very nice today. You look very nice today. Yeah. He's um, running for office, Jimmy. We're, we're going to start a new show about, about oh. Dave. God, family, country, and the truth. Since since. I like all, that. There ain't, there ain't new, much truth left in this fucking world. Well, that's why we, we have to we have <laughs> look, we, we have to awaken the whole world. There's a whole new world. Order I got some truth right here, George. Let's yeah, what's see going? Let's Jimmy, see. I'm upset. There's fucking get, stone. I, you want to see the stone? stone? Let's see the oh, stone. Oh, Here's nasty. the fucking oh. stone. Oh. All right, that come out of my fucking cock. Hey. That's the truth right there. Oh, You're gonna How about yeah. that? <laughs> and, that, and that was the second one. I had one on Sunday. I had one last night. Can you zoom right. in? On? They're coming out of me like fucking zoom grenades. Here, look. <laughs> Hold it close to the camera there, Joe. It, like oh, yeah. it looks like a piece of a hot dog. Oh, yeah, I think it is a piece of hot dog. You're right, George. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hot dog. I've never seen a red kidney stone. That's what happens. Listen, the when I went to my doctor, I, 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 text, I text my doctor. He told me this before, but I text my doctor this fucking stone. And he said, Jimmy, I don't know anybody who fast stones like you, man. He goes, you could fast anything. So I, I must have an extra big hole in my penis. I don't know. Well, oh, you really shape now. Oh, that fucking huge, right? That, hold that up again. Yeah. I think that is a hot dog. I think it is. <laughs> John, I think it calcified it just broke. the hot dog. It broke. It's just broken pieces. Yeah. I had That's it. Shit. I had it. Uh, whatever. Now it's three for here. I'll put it on. Maybe I'll show you on the paper. Hold I'm on. kind of a little grossed out by. I got to be honest with you that you're holding up your 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 you know urinary uh, stone? stone. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? Hey. Can you see it? Can you see I it? I was gonna go eat some rock candy. How about that? <laughs> it looks <laughs> like the fucking Orion constellation. How about that over there? How about that? <laughs> huh? You probably oh, can powderize that, and I bet <laughs> someone would inject it into looks themselves. Looks like pop rocks. Anabolic or something. I'm going to get a COVID test right now. I haven't been feeling good since. Oh, you're not getting. Why do you get one? Don't get one. Uh, I don't know, man. I I, Boy, I, I felt I, I I didn't go to work yesterday. What's today? Tuesday? No, I didn't go to work today. Oh, I called in. I can't go. That's to because home. you I, don't I wear my taste. You don't wear a I mask. Lost. I've seen you. You need Dave Samala. I wear a fucking mask everywhere I go. Don't give you me always get yelled at. Breathe. You go to Seven Eleven, you get yelled at for no masks. I've been wearing the fucking thing. Well, it's too That's late now. You already Florida. got COVID. You know, you know, I tell you, you know what it is. I work at fucking twelve hours a day like a fucking animal on this fucking job. Right. I, I, I you told you the other day I, what happened in the, in the fucking barbershop, right? After, one day I had three fucking events, man, that I couldn't even, I could write a book. What, what happened, happened with these three you? events? Hey, wait, what happened? I had a guy pull up to this fucking barbershop. Huh? Yeah. Turn your phone sideways. Sideways? Yeah. 
Like that? Yes. There you go. All right. So I pull up to this barber shop because the paper says, you know, fucking barber shop, right? So I, I pull up there, right? So I, I knock on the door. I says, where's your fill? I'm thinking around the back of the building, right? He says, you got to come through the shop. I said, I got to go through the shop with the fucking hose? Oh, this is a He says, story. yeah. I said, that's a, little, that's a little fucking odd. I says, all right, whatever. I pull the truck up. I get it situated. I pull the fucking hose. I'm running through the fucking shop. All the old men are getting their hair cut, shaved and shit. I'm running through the fucking shop. I go out the back door. I see the tank up there. I hook it up. I'm filling it up, right? I'm saying, this is fucking crazy. This is weird. You know, I never did something like this before. Now I'm done with the fill. I get the hose. I throw it over my shoulder. I run back to the fucking store. All of a sudden, I'm out by the truck, and I hear the owner yelling. Oh, oh, Jeff, stop, stop the hose. Cause I, cause I, when I, was, I went outside, I hit the retractor. So the hose is reeling back to the truck, right? <laughs> All of a sudden, what happened, I, I didn't know what happened. I was dragging an old man out of the fucking barbershop, okay? What happened was the fucking, see how the hose flipped on me. So I kind of drew a little scale of what happened. So as I was dragging the hose out of the store, the hose flipped over and grabbed the guy's chair with him in. He was about 95, this guy. He was fucking screaming across the fucking the barbershop. I almost had him out the front fucking door. I, that, was one, that was one stop. Then I go to another stop. So fuck, I'm going to quit this fucking job. I can't, that's why I'm sick right now. I'm working fucking 12, 13 hours a fucking day. I go to this Chinese bar. I called, that was last week when I lost you. Can guys you imagine it was behind? Show. Jimmy, I, let me stop you. Saying. John, can you imagine if that was black when he had got wrapped the chair around? It would be asphyxiation training. I'm not asphyxiation training. With the... But, the, uh, but who else? Who else that? would that happen to? I know. Who it's like this I'm saying. That? I can't make this shit up. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck is going on. I go to the Chinese laundromat, right, John? It says on the paper, Chinese laundromat. I forget the name of the fucking place. I right? saw so Chinese restaurant, uh, uh, laundromat. Okay, I pull up. It says pull in the back of the store. So I pull in. I back up to the fucking alleyway. I don't see the fill anywhere. I see his door with his name on it. So I walk around the fucking front. All through the snow, I knock on the fucking door. He opens it up. He got the ten mask on. I says, "Excuse me, sir. Where is the fill in the back?" Did you? Behind did you, the back. Did you behind have a mask? Did you have I a mask says, on? Did you? No, have I did. I says, "Behind oh. the box." No, okay, the behind there. the box. I go in the back. I walk all the way to the back. All right. I told you about this, Dave. I look in the back. There's a pile of by twelve feet fucking high, ten feet wide of boxes just piled up there. Right. I'm like, Dude, he can't mean this. So I go back around the front again. I knock on the fucking door. He opens the door, the door lock. I says, listen, sir, you talking about the boxes in the back? He says, your boxes, the boxes. Because he can't speak English. I says, could you show me what boxes you're talking? He goes, ah, oh, he throws his hands in the air. He goes, I meet, I go around again. I meet him. This fucking for 20 minute fucking stops. Let's be a fucking five minute film. Yeah. Comes out of the back and he points to the boxes. 12 feet high, 10 feet wide. I go, you want me to dig through the boxes to get the fucking, I said, I ain't going to the fucking, no, oh, you must fill. You fill back. I said, I'm not filling nothing. No, you are. I called the police. I said, don't call the police. I said, I ain't fucking filling shit. No, you fill. I called. I, I said, you know what? Fuck you and your fucking oil, right? And I, he goes, I called the police. And he goes back inside. I get my fucking truck. I leave. That was it. Jimmy now I got one more stop. Hold, hold, hold on. on hold on. Hold on. Right. John, hold on. Jimmy has a lot of problems with Asian people. You ever noticed that? <laughs> he doesn't get along well with a, Especially when there's a vehicle involved. Yeah. That's from the, <laughs> the fucking guy was going to call the cops on me, John, because I didn't want to move 10,000 boxes. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> why man. didn't he just show you where like. it was? Yeah, why didn't he move them? Because that's what they do. That's what those old Chinese guys do. They, he needed to move the box, so he's thinking, okay, the oil guy's coming. Yeah. I'm going to have him do it. Yeah, like the juice. Get the oil. <laughs> so he <laughs> uh, killed two birds with one stone. He's yeah. going to get his boxes moved. Jimmy, three, Jimmy you're Jimmy lucky he didn't say to you. You, you have disrespected boxes. me for the last time. For yeah. to face your back, back in the day, <laughs> back in the look, day, John, I, Jimmy would have karate kicked all those boxes over, would have filled the freaking oil and left. Yeah, yeah to probably. Face the old yeah. Jimmy would have done yeah. that. But no, yeah. 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 Well, you know, when he said he was going to call the cops on me, that's when I said, oh, game off, right? So, so now I got one more stop. I was going to tell you that this day. So well, anyway. How come you didn't stomp on him? I, I just told him to go fuck himself. He, I mean, I'm not your slave, man. I'm not going to start fucking moving. Guy, I had to go, to go to a house. A guy had a, a, a pile of snow by the fill. I go, what, what is this? And there was a shovel next to it. No. I says, what's, what's this? He goes, there's the shovel. I says, you're fucking kidding me, right? I says, stop. That ain't fucking happening, brother. I says, I'm out of here. He goes, you can't leave. I says, I'm fucking leaving. Because I got no oil. I says, I don't give a shit. 
Dig it out, and I'll fill it. Otherwise, I'm out of here. I left. People got no, some no, one, freaking one, nerve. I got one more story because I got to go to MD and get a fucking, I got to get a thing shoved up my nose. So anyway, what you I, go to this, I, I, I go to the next stop. Right? I'm reading my fucking paper. 1113 Nielsen Drive, uh, fucking Far Rockaway. I'm going, Jesus Christ, I got to go all the way over there now. I'm punching it in the GPS. 1113 Far Rockaway. And nothing's oh, coming up. Far Rockaway. I, I did Queens. I did this. I did that. I did New York City. I did Staten Island. I did everything I fucking can. It wasn't, I didn't want to call the office and look like an asshole because I couldn't get it on my GPS, right? So finally, I had to call him there half hour looking for the address. I finally called up the office and said, Donna, what the fuck address is this? I can't get it on my GPS. 1113 Nielsen Street and fucking Far Rockaway. She goes, oh, that's Queens. You got to do 11 13. I says, well, well, how come it's not on the paper? It's 11 13 on the paper. So I put it in, bam, comes right up Far Rockaway. I go there. I get to the house. It's a, it's a little old lady. She answers. I knock on the door. It's a real old, like, Saratoga house. Gigantic porch, fence to the left. Fence to the right, no no access to the yard whatsoever. I knock on the door, she comes in a jacket, the little old woman. She, I felt so bad for her. I says, where's the film, ma'am? Oh, she says, on the right side of the house. I said, well, how do I get there? <laughs> oh, you got to jump over the wall and then pull the, pull the hose over the fence. That's how they, and, oh, and go, I says, I got to jump over the wall. So I go over to the fucking wall. I look at the wall, it's a six foot drop. <laughs> I, I'm going, you're kidding me, man. Right? I got I to jump over this wall and I got to bring the fucking hose over the fence over there through the fucking trees. I says, you're kidding me, right, man? She goes, please, I got no oil. I said, oh, motherfuckers. So I go, I get the fucking hose. I drag a fucking toe in the hose over the fucking fence like this. I go up her fucking stairs, up to her porch. I jump off the fucking wall. <laughs> Right? Now I'm filling up the fucking oil. I get done. Take the hose. I'm throwing it back over the fucking fence, right? Now I'm looking at the wall. Now the wall is this high. Right? <laughs> because I jumped over. Now it's fucking up this high. So I'm like, how the fuck am I going to get out of here? I said, you know what? I'll just jump. So I ran. I'm figuring I'm like I'm 25 years old, right? So I ran. I figure I'm going to jump up the wall to get the oh leg over God. the wall, right? I run right into the wall, Dave. Bam, like that. And I was just there like this. It was a cartoon. I said, I said, I said, I got my jumping power. I, yeah, exactly. So I, then I look around. I see a fucking bucket. I said, that's a Home Depot bucket. The guys must use the bucket. Let me get the bucket. I turn it upside down. I go to step on it with my left foot. No. Right through the bucket. <laughs> now, I'm the bucket. now I'm running around the yard. And I'm kicking the fucking bucket because it was like a bear trap. It didn't break clean. My foot went through the bucket and got caught on my leg. Now I'm fucking throwing the bucket around like this here, cursing. The lady's banging on the window laughing. I'm like, you're laughing, huh? <laughs> the ladies, the ladies laughing. laughing. She could have the let ladies. the guy, she could have let laughing. you into the house to walk around. Can you knock over your fence, she goes, right? go get a ladder. There's ladders over there. I said, fuck, I get the bucket off. Fine. Why couldn't she I let you in the house to walk around? There was no way. It was just, the, there was, it was all fenced in. So I see the ladder. I go to grab the ladder. I'm pulling the, it's all snowed in the ladder. So I'm pulling on the fuck. I go, what's wrong with this fucking ladder? I start cleaning off the top. A fucking, they're chained up. I got no ladder, right? And I see a patio chair. One of those ones from 1970 when you're out of your fucking uncle's house, right? I said, fuck it. I put the fucking plastic chair there. I stand on oh. that. The, the legs fold over. I go flying into the bushes. I go, I got another fucking chair. She got about 10 of them there. I got another fucking chair. I stand on that and I finally I get over the fucking wall. I got out of here. Jesus Christ. Doesn't that what? remind you of like the, of like the, the the gorilla exhibit at the zoo? <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems very uh, scary that he was trapped in there so much. I, I was trapped. You know, I what? was trapped. I was getting close to fall back. I couldn't get out. How did she I get into her own yard? Thanks. You know, we're missing the boat here. Yeah. This is just one day for him. <laughs> right. This is, a, this is a normal day for Jimmy, and we're not filming this shit. Yeah. But Tyler, you got you got to get the camera. We gotta follow. We gotta follow Jimmy around. Fly to New York. But, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine yeah. if we had all that on tape and dancing around? Yeah, but you know what's the best through the bucket? Come in. You know come what on. the best part is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what the, John, you know what the best part is? After that, he went and got a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he got a kidney stone when he got home. And then yeah. the next day, he peed it out. It was all petrified. <laughs> Let me tell you something, bro. That was a fucking day from hell, man. That's why well, I get home. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be what's tomorrow. What's gonna I, be call, I called in sick. I'm not going to probably. You know what, John? He probably drinks zero, zero liquids the whole day, probably. and except for coffee. So Actually, he's so dehydrated, which is probably what's contributing yeah, to his kidney this, stones. And, and, and the nitrites in the hot dogs. Oh, my God. Look at diet root beer. Calcium.
Yeah, no, I, 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 I want some Petey Light, but I, I can't drink that all day long either. Drink water. Beers. Drink beers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, I don't think I do that. If I drink beers, forget it. The Chinese man would have caught a beat if I was drinking beers. <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> no, but seriously, Jimmy, why do you have so many problems with you, you? have a lot of problem with Asian people with the driving, with with with. Uh, I don't know what it you is. Had man. A, did I'm, you have I, an Asian you know, dentist for a while? Didn't you have an Asian dentist? I'm so I listen, and I'm so nice to these people. When I showed, I knocked at the door. I called them sir. I said hi, sir. I'm here for your oil. Where's the fill? He goes, yeah, the back. It's just nasty. I'm like, okay. He's back. right. Yeah. He, Jimmy is 100% right. Plus, they, they're nasty as hell, especially those old skinny old men with the, with the feet out like in the side like that. No personality, John, whatsoever. No, they're mean. Yeah. They're like barking they, dogs. I think they're, all, they're, I think all like, old people have, whether they're Chinese, Jewish, Italian, they're all angry and cranky. You ever noticed that? <laughs> yeah, you know why? I'll tell you why. Because this world beats you down. At the end, you realize where you're yeah. living. And you're fucking yeah, but, I, but, <laughs> but, Jimmy, but with respect to Jimmy's in particular affliction with Asian yeah. people, he's right. They, they are Those old Asian men are nasty like a Jack Russell. They're nasty fucking people. <laughs> and the other thing is Jimmy spends a lot of time on the road. Okay? It is an unquestionable truth. Absolutely a bona fide fact of fucking life in New York that the worst fucking drivers on the road doing the most insane shit are fucking Asian. <laughs> Every single time, you if there's a Cadillac to make it a left-hand turn when there's no road and he's halfway up on the sidewalk and the trucks are <laughs> screeching on their brakes and the guy in a skateboard smashes into the van. He's laying on the street. You look in the car and the Cadillac, who is it? The fucking Korean woman. I swear to God, that's exactly you know, you what You know what they remind me of, John? He spends yeah, but, yeah, a lot of time on the road. You and guys sound like a bunch of old drivers. You ever, you ever watch, when man. you was a kid, you ever watch Mr. Magoo when you was a kid? Who <laughs> Mr. Magoo, <laughs> Charlie Sosati. <laughs> Yeah. That's who the that's who the Asian people are, Mr. Magoo. Because as you as they're cutting you off and you're hitting the fucking tree, they're just smiling and they keep driving. You know what I mean? It's like another fucking day. They, 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 it's true. They let him and they're smiling. They, yeah. like, smiling. Yeah. Smiling. I had a lady almost cut me off into a funnel. You know where the, where the highway splits up? And you got the, the in New York. They got those big water fucking tanks. You know, so if you hit them, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I almost went into that. The lady cut me off. She was in a Mercedes, and I was looking at her, and she just turned up. She was smiling. I almost went into those fucking water barrels. I had to turn it on to get the fuck off the ice. And it wasn't even my exit. Yeah, here's you know a true story. <laughs> true story related to that. I went to do a guest posing, and whoever they said to pick me up from the airport was this Asian girl. She was a competitor, very pretty girl. And when I got out, I got my luggage. I get out to the car. She's like, you want to drive? I said, "This is, is this your car? She's like, yeah. I said, why would you want me to drive? She goes, you know us Asian, you know us Asians are terrible drivers. I said, fine, I'll drive. So she was making it's a amazing. joke about Asians, but she, you know, she was Asian, so it was pretty funny. Who was that, Denise Paglia? No, no, it wasn't Denise Paglia. Denise Paglia. Yeah, but you know, it was amazing, Dave. The Chinese race, they're very smart people. I mean, they, they technology, they're science, they, you know, they, they, they're very good, but they get a simple thing like getting in a fucking car and driving in a straight line is almost impossible. What? I don't know how these people get their license. Jimmy, since you're a stereo, uh, a, 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 uh, I guess you could say a um, racial profiler, what is uh, what were the Italians? What are they not good at? What what is what's annoying about Italians? Old Italians? No patience. Road rage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I know, you know why? I'm Italian. I got it. I've cursed everybody out all fucking day. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, they filmed me in my truck. You know what I mean? Because on my job, they filmed the inside and they filmed the front. Oh, really? I could imagine what they see with me. But I say, <laughs> you know, I'm I driving the, the truck. I'm, I'm going, you cocksucker. You fucking Chinese bastard. You fucking yellow scream. I could imagine. They don't even, they don't even fucking call me. Tell me anything. They probably left their asses off watching. Jimmy, That's what. You love it. You probably you're into your entertainment. Probably. Oh my God, the shit yeah, they, I do in that truck. They're probably paying yeah. double just just to drive in the truck. Yeah, yeah, nothing, 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 I was eating an apple. I fucking threw. I threw an apple, an apple at a guy. Even the shitty truck. It's because he's because I, of the tapes. What, I was eating the apple. Yeah. Guy cut me off. I threw the fucking apple at him right out of the fucking truck. Right what about uh, what about Irish people? What's the stereotype about them driving? Anything? Oh my my mom my my mom is. A, is a pretty wild driver. She curses at, and she's 84. I That's drive with my mom, she's cursing guys out. I go, mom, what are you doing? <laughs> it's. I think it's all old people. I'm convinced my of it. My mom is like, 
as old people get older, they don't give a fuck anymore, and they just they just they just say whatever they want. No, Dave, Dave, you're right though. Old Italians and old Jewish guys, they're yeah. the worst. The worst. Old Italians are the Wor worst. 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 They're the worst. You ever try to talk to an old Italian guy and shit? You can't talk fucking eat. Dickheaded, bro. Really dickheaded. And it's always it's always the little stringy ones. Not, not... And they drive like shit too. They drive big cars, Cadillacs and shit. And, and they drive real a... slow. And they're always in a no. They're always in a hurry. No, they're, they're my grandfather. He was ninety-two. My Italian grandfather. He had a one of those old Cadillac Seville's, you know, from the seventies. Oh, yeah. And oh, what man. he would do is when the rust, you know, one. they would get rusted out. He would get spackled because he was a he was a, a bricklayer and he would spackle the outside <laughs> of the uh, of the Cadillac, you know. And he said, "I'm not one of those slow pokes on the road. I drive, you know." I and, and he was dangerous. Believe me, I've seen him driving. <laughs> he drove oh, to yeah, bro. They're the worst. Yeah, they're worst. They're the, the old Italians. They got to get to the uh, the meat market. They yeah. got to catch yeah, the yeah, sales. Yeah, yeah, they go to the supermarket on Saturday. They exactly. Have places to go. People are. Well, they're good at saving money, Italians. <laughs> Dude, they sit in the car and they argue with their wives and shit, right, yeah. the whole time. Absolutely. Over the stupidest shit. <laughs> Even at home, over the stupidest fucking shit. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're you right. You can't tell an old Italian guy nothing. Opinionated, argumentative. Um, <laughs> their kids can do no wrong. You get you get a Sicilian mother, her kid can walk on water. Yeah. Wait, you wait, wait, wait. No, so they can do no wrong to the mother. But to the father, they don't do anything right. Yeah. No, 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 they don't do nothing right. But the the Sicilian mother, the firstborn son, is is like the the prize. God bless. Right, he can like, right he can kill someone, and she'd be like, no, it was an accident, you know. <laughs> it, like, it was like the it was, it, it, He shouldn't have made him pull the gun out. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but then the old man and the father says, "I told you he's a no good mother." Son yeah. of the best. <laughs> when he was born. So, but right. the father, you can do no right. It don't matter. Right. If you won the lottery, say, now what are you going to do with all that fucking money, That's right? right. My, friend, my, Jim, my friend Jimmy Bevelock was getting ready to go to prison, and his mother's crying. He's going to go for two years. And his mother's crying. He goes, Can, let me do it for you. Let me tell them I'll go do it for you. I'll, I'll, I'll go to prison for you. <laughs> and then the father's like, let this son of a bitch go. Yeah, he, and then the father, no good let him fucking rot in there to teach him a lesson. <laughs> yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't know about right. you, John, but when I was a kid, man, I caught a lot of beatings from my grandmother. She was from Sicily. Yeah. My grandmother. Oh, I, didn't say, I didn't say she. I didn't say they grandmother. Didn't grandmother. Yeah, yeah. Different story. My yeah. grandmother, man. Oh, she was tough, boy. She she, ever she, throw everybody throw? was afraid of her. She did. She my ex-mother-in-law was Italian. She, she beat me with an Italian. extension cord one time. How about the shoe? Who did? Who, who, Italian mothers always throw the shoe. Did you? The shoe and the wooden and the wooden fucking spoon over wooden the fucking spoon. handle. Because yeah. the <laughs> they're always cooking. <laughs> my, my mother used to keep the wooden spoon in her apron string like a holster. <laughs> <laughs> she would pull it out and start beating on me. All and right. I always said, "Mom, all my friends, they mom, the mothers don't do hit him with the spoon. They throw the shoe at him. The shoe at him." And she goes, "I'm not gonna throw one of my shoes at you. I like my shoes." <laughs> she said, beat me with the freaking wooden spoon. But I don't know. My, but my if grandmother. somebody from outside the house did so, was like looked at me wrong, forget it. She'd kill him. Yeah. Dude, my old it. Italian, I had a my great grandmother. She was so fucked up. She would tell the kids, "Here, I'd give you candy." You know, she couldn't speak English though. She only spoke in Italian, and she would hand us moth balls. You know what I mean? Uh, we'd, we'd, be over there, <laughs> we'd be over there. My my, you know, her, my maybe she wanted to put you out of your misery. Yeah, snap your head. Get it? Don't eat that. You know what I mean? It, it was <laughs> hey, this, hey, Greg, does anybody do that anymore? I remember as a kid, always the moth balls in the closet. Anybody do that? Anymore? Yeah, I know, right? I don't know, man. Uh, I don't think there's any moths left together. anymore. Most no, kids today don't even know what now, moth balls when, are. When they take the clothes, like the coats out, you know, in the fall, because like, they had them in the closet all winter, yeah. in, in the bag with the moth yeah. ball, and that yeah. smell. Oh yeah. my God! You get on the school bus with that fucking jacket stinking like. <laughs> Dude, they had you. Never forget that. They had the couch, the, the sofa, the, the sofa and the couch were in a fucking bag, right? Yeah, Moth balls, I, I believe. The yeah. You sit on a plastic fucking yeah, covering. Yeah, I mean, I, I sent Dave pictures of my couches. I was all in plastic back in yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what, though, Jimmy? Plastic, Hold plastic on, water. oh my God! I, Jimmy, having three young kids, I know, understand now. I understand why the Italians put plastic all over everything. I got, we got towels over the all kids. the chairs in my house. The kids, my kids, they're such they spill everything. You know, right? Yeah, what, we had plastic what, over what, everything. What it it makes sense to me now. Finally, 
<laughs> what what was the stereotype though of us that were you know older guys that was you know the Italian house had the kitchen in the basement the couch oh was yeah the kitchen plastic. in the basement you had the that was a, that was in Brooklyn that was in Brooklyn you a lot. had to have a kitchen in the basement we had yeah, kitchen I, in the basement my grandmother never cooked upstairs no always that was in for the basement coffee. that was for making coffee always it, in the basement always in, in the basement you had the plastic Big runner kitchen. The one with the plastic runners on the car, on the carpet. They but you know what? It plastic. makes sense. I understand why they do it now. <laughs> they were protecting the house yeah, from the kids. Because, yeah. because, my, because my grandmother bought a couch in 1941, right. and she's going to keep it for 500 years. <laughs> she still got the fucking yeah. thing. Never buy another couch. Yeah, yeah but you, you know what, John? Ruin anything no. When you, you have ruin young anything kids, the they'll ruin the couch right. in one day. My kids, one day you give them, they'll, they'll ruin everything, you know. Listen, we used to have 40 people in the basement because you can't ruin the basement. You got concrete fucking floors, concrete right. fucking right, floors, right. and hey, a Jimmy. fucking three, three folding tables now with a tablecloth on it. That's what right? you can say. You took it out of my mouth. I was just say they only use folding tables. Yeah. You never right. used the radio. You had no table down in right. the basement. You always, we yeah. ate on folding tables. Oh, Look, yeah. I bought a new refrigerator, on. one of these real high-tech refrigerators. <laughs> it, one day, my son already had... Four dents in it already, with running into it with his head. <laughs> My wife's like, oh, it's ruined. I said, it's going to be. Talk to Chris Aceto. The whole, his whole house is ruined, he said, from his four kids. I said, it, it, that's what they do. Kids run into things. I said, there's no way around it. You got to wait till they're out of the house to rebuy new stuff. That's the way it works. Yeah, and, and, and then you'll miss And then you'll miss them. That's right. All right, I got to play this clip, guys. I found a clip someone sent me, one of our, uh, our, our viewers. It's. Arthur Jones. Now, Arthur Jones was the inventor of Nautilus um, uh, equipment. He also was the guy who, was, who did the um, the heavy duty training system, which is the like one set or two sets, you know, to failure. Dorian Yates did it. Mike Menzer did it. Casey Viator did it. He was really a, a revolutionary, you know, thinker. He actually also bred snakes. He was people. I don't know. People don't realize this. Arthur Jones was a huge snake breeder back in the day as well. He did it all. He was like a Renaissance man. So he's on this talk show. And one of the guests, uh, someone, one of the viewers calls in with a question asking why uh, Mike Menser and Casey Vieta weren't with him anymore. And yeah, it's a minute clip. I got to play it. It's hysterical. This is, this is, I think Arthur Jones and, and Jimmy the Bull might actually be related. Watch this. <laughs> All right. A final question for Arthur and Terry Jones before the break. What is your question, please? Yes, Arthur Jones. Uh, I would like to know why that none of the top bodybuilding champions are staying with the Nautilus uh, in the land. Did you hear like, that? Uh, for example, the Mentor Brothers or uh, Viator. Arthur, phrase the question and give the answer. The question was, I didn't catch the name of the caller, but the question referred to bodybuilders who have trained in the land, Florida, and left. And without going into any names, I will simply say that no bodybuilder has ever left the land, Florida, of his own will. None of them quit. They were all fired. Well, that wasn't the question. The question was that he said that many Why times... Why do they come there and leave? No, no, he said... They come me. there because they want to find out something. And when we do find out something, we fire them. Why was he fired? <laughs> Various reasons. Well, I mean, give us a reason. We want it. You, you, you said you, you raised the question. Well, I did, why, why did you Use fire this man? Use of drugs, uh, theft, uh, laziness, stupidity, uh, <laughs> or incompetence. <laughs> How funny is that, John? Oh, man, he really hit him hard. Is Jimmy, that that, he, I think he's related to you. He looks like No, you. that's Casey Vieta. <laughs> that Casey? And, yeah. yeah, that's Casey. Yeah. Roger Cowell didn't have arms like that. Look at the forearms. That's yeah, Casey. that's Casey. That's uh, Casey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Those that's Casey. guys had sick genetics too. I mean, besides the fact, I mean, they were Arthur Jones though was a genius, but he obviously yeah. was a really hard guy. You know, hardcore guy. You know, he didn't take any crap from anyone. You know, dude, the hard, the hard truth. So let like me tell you something. Old. Did you know that Gary Jones, his son, is the one who came out with Hammer yeah. Strength? Nobody, yeah. a lot of people do. don't realize that. that but he invented strength. Hammer Strength. Uh, machines and stuff. He's, he got into a war stuff. with his father too over there. Oh yeah, they didn't like each other. They yeah, definitely split couldn't off. stand each other. Yep. Dude, I trained my my original trainer John and I were talking about this. First real gym I ever joined was the Nautilus Training Center in like 1975. And if you you could not do more than one set, and the owner was one of his disciples. You know, learned from actual Arthur Jones. Right. And let me tell you something. You, would, you did not want him to put you to a set. One set would last five fucking minutes. 
You did people would throw up. It was horrible. You do. I mean, <clears throat> you do it full reps, full range. God forbid you do. You don't do full range. And then he would drop the set and drop sets and negatives and, and partials and all that shit until you could not move. They believed in one set till you could not move. And that's why everybody today doesn't understand when they talk about heavy duty. I got guys in the gym like, that's not heavy duty. You think heavy duty means heavy weights? It doesn't mean heavy weights. It means annihilate. You got to go to there's not a fiber left that's not that can function in your muscle and that's what the dorian h used to do it's why right. people say oh dorian dorian h trained on machines bro he squatted on a machine he bench pressed on a machine Greg, nobody tell knows that machines come about how machines were they, they the machines had two different movements on them. dude those were like, chain sprockets those right. were and he had that i had all right. nautilus in my gym too i love nautilus dude hit that nautilus yeah. pullover is yeah. fucking legendary dorian everybody knows dorian that, that but the thing is you you had in in Arthur Jones' mind, you had to do it his way. And right. finally, the guy that owned my gym, his name was Bob Beth. He would uh, he would eventually he had to start letting people do sets on the machines because <laughs> nobody. It takes a lot of guts to train that way. You don't even want to go to the gym. You cry. I don't want to go there. You had to go to to each. You start at the beginning of the circuit. You could never jump to another fucking machine. You had to follow the way it went. That was the Arthur Jones theory for right. the whole body, but you could not have a fiber in whatever muscle you're doing. Like, let's say you're doing a bicep machine. Back then it was called the compound bicep. You do the bicep machine. You could not have one fiber left <laughs> to function. And they believed in absolute failure. And he had, he had a great, he had a great machine for the pre-exhaustion, that chest machine. Remember? Yeah. It had, oh my God. That was a compound chest. So you, yes, you, you go in and you exhaust your pecs with just isolation. And then when you can't move them anymore, then you use your triceps to help squeeze out. Yeah. So oh, that was the, that that was the Nautilus machine. Yeah, yeah the Nautilus. Nautilus. Yeah. yeah. I had everyone. Well, remember remember Steve Mahalik, uh, Greg? He kind of trained like that. Oh, yeah. Mahalik, too. But Mahalik yeah. was big in that, like, the intensity. I Dude, I train Mahalik shit right now. Inten John Defendis, in intensity yeah. or insanity. Yep. But that was a lot of sets, a lot of reps. This fucking guy would kill you. Would absolutely you could not get off the machine. It, I mean, he would fucking almost berate you if you tried. Like, stop! What are you fucking push? Keep going. I mean, you had to keep going. It it, it didn't matter. You you didn't want to work out like who? Nobody wants to work out like that. You know. Right. It made you not, not want. More. Look, Arnold Schwarzenegger said I he tried not, the Arthur not today. Jones method <laughs> and he got the worst thing that could happen to a bodybuilder. He got smaller and smoother. That's what he said. He broke well, down too much. He wasn't working hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, those guys didn't do cardio Street back Jesus then. They, their, their workout was their cardio because they would do three hours. Oh, on your shirt. Is that Street Jesus? Bobby Muscles. Trend Who the hell's that? He does, the, he does all those cool shirts, you oh, know, the uh, <laughs> Planet Trend. I thought, it, I thought it was Jorge Masvidal. <laughs> I thought it was Hottie Shupin at first. <laughs> it looks like it. All right, He's guys, I love Hottie you, man. Shupin. I got to go get a All right, yeah, I got to go. Also. I love you, Jimmy. Love you, Jimmy. Love you. Jimmy, Jimmy don't stop being the my dogs. Jimmy, I sent you that commercial. Oh, I got a quick story. My, my, how I got the name The Iron Bull, my grandmother gave me that name back in the day before I got a job with uh, Twin Lab. All right. She, she gave you that name? Yeah, I, I used to, when I was a kid, I used to be in the kitchen. My grandma was cooking, and I used to go, Grandma, come on, feel the arm. She's just in Italian. She's just like, I ain't like, I'm, and she's like a bull. She's like, I So I, when I went to California and I had an interview with Don, he got me drunk. He was feeding me fucking vodka and shit, right? And he put their tape recorder down. He's asking me all these questions. And I told him the story. And then he said, That's it. He goes, The Iron. Oh, that's that's how I got that name. Oh, that's Thirty great. fucking years ago. Don Ross. Yeah. Don boy. Ross. Don, Ripper. Don Ross. <laughs> Don the Ripper. I love Don, man. He was unique. I knew Don. He, he was unique. <clears throat> well, he's the first Don person Don to really Ripper. feature you, right, Jimmy? Huh? Don Ross was the the guy who really put you on the map, right? Yeah, yeah. because when I when I flew to California, I used to go visit Jimmy Quinn when he moved out there. You yeah. know, and he was I trained with him for a long time, so. One day I was in Gold's Venice there, just pumping fucker, going crazy. And Don Ross says, Jimmy, he goes, who was that guy over there? <laughs> and Jimmy goes, my friend Jimmy from New York. He goes, you guys from the East are animals. He goes, can I interview him? <laughs> Jimmy goes, yeah, I'll introduce him. So he introduced me. We set up an interview <clears throat> at his house. I went over there. I drank my ass off, smoked pot. And stuff. I got all <laughs> fucked up. And then he was asking me questions. And I was just going ballistic because he got me all fucked up. 
You know, he, he knew how to get me, man. <laughs> but you know, yeah, I, so, love, I love that guy. He was a wealth of knowledge, man. He was. He yeah, was, he was, man. He was a wealth he, of knowledge. I worked with him at at at, um, at Muscular Development. He did a, a column called The Muscle Beach Beat. Yeah, he, he worked for, I, for uh, Steve Blackman. Yeah. Right, yeah, that's why I, I worked very closely yeah. with him. And he, he, him and yeah. Rita, all the time we would get his know, wife. Yeah, his wife Rita. You know, John, I tell you, when I went to Japan, I, I, I Don was going to write a book with me, Train, uh, Train with an Attitude by Jimmy the Bull. Right, we were going to put this whole <laughs> book together, all, all this shit I did and everything. Right, so I went to Japan, and Don says, when you go to Japan, take a lot of pictures. You come back, we'll put it in the book, and he had the whole outline already. I flew home from Japan like three weeks later. I land in New York, and Keith Angeline calls me up, right? You remember Keith Angeline, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He calls me up. He goes, yo, Jimmy, he goes, did you hear about Don? I go, no, I just landed in Kennedy fucking four hours ago. What do you mean? What happened? He goes, he passed away. I go, no fucking way. So I called Rita. I called the house, you know, in California. I said, Rita, it's Jimmy the Bull. She just started crying. I was like, holy shit. I couldn't believe he, he passed away on me. What, do you have well, a heart attack? Just so, just so heart you attack. know. Yeah. Don Ross is the reason why Jimmy the Bull got a contract with Muscular Development. And I was there when Don Ross was explaining to Steve who the Jimmy the Bull was. And he's saying, he, he's this guy from New York and he's got this big <laughs> accent and he, and, and he, and, and, and he, and he lifts weights, heavy weights, <laughs> 600, 700. <laughs> and I'm all like, listen, when I did that thousand pounds, Don, Don it, Ross is right because he yeah, was so, there. Yeah, so Don, you know, he's you know, the writer that he is, right? right. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting right. ready to do the thousand pound bench, right? And Don goes, No, oh, Jimmy, stop, stop. I said, What? He goes, You got to put a little more on. I, I got to write it up. Jimmy the Bull breaks the thousand pound barrier. You know, he didn't want me to do a thousand. I had to break it. You know, so we put like, like fucking two nickels on the end, we duct taped them. <laughs> I was, I did the ten fifteen, crazy shit, man. That was good times, man. He, you know, it's funny. Every all week, I was doing a photo shoot with uh, Mitsuru Okabe. I made the, I made the oh, cover. Oh shit, of I know Mitsuru. Yeah, yeah, I made the cover. He got me on the cover. MD. Steve got me in the back room that time, and yep. he showed me the picture doing the dumbbell curls. And he goes, Jimmy, I'm gonna make you a star. <laughs> I said, Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. You know. <laughs> But Masuro Kabi was shooting me from Monday to Friday. Then I was fly, staying at Jimmy Quinn's house. I was going to fly out of L.A. and go back to New York, right? So every day I went in Venice and I was doing a body part, everybody was coming up to me. Yo, Bull, when are you going to bench? I said, probably on Friday. I got to do buys, <laughs> shoulder. You know, I got to wear Most people are resting. He's doing his whole body. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was yeah, – No, body, but, no, you know, no, no. It wasn't it. What he's saying is – what he's saying is he, 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 just, he didn't want to – you broke up John. at any other time. <laughs> so anyway, I, you know, so Monday I did bars, you know, and that's people in the in the Gold's gym kept asking me, "Yo, bull, when are you going to bench?" I said, "Probably Friday." So Friday came, it was fucking like four hundred people there. You know what I mean? <laughs> and people with fucking ladders and video cameras, some <laughs> video companies showed up. I'm like, "What the fuck is going on here?" You know what I mean? I was just doing a fucking photo shoot. So now this turned into a bench seminar, you know. So I was like, "Oh my god!" I went to the bath. I made the sign. I said, "Lord, I got to put out," you know. And I, that's how I, that's how I did the whole thing. But it's, it was it was a lot of fun. I got on the plane. I had to get on the plane like two hours later. Jimmy dropped me off there. I had to take Advil. I had to sit in that little fucking seat like this <laughs> after benching a thousand pounds. My shoulders were fucking killing me. I'm sitting in this fucking chair like this, you know. <laughs> Six John, hours Ross, John Ross talked about that forever. He, that was he. He was so impressed. When Jimmy did that, because you give me a Dave, Dave uh, the barbarian, Dave uh, was, David was running around in the street, huh? David Paul, yeah, yeah, David. He was running around in the park lot. He's crazy. He's running around the park lot because they I thought they were crazy. crazy. They met someone crazier than them. Yeah, you, who you were, Jimmy? <laughs> you were crazier yeah, than was, the Barbarian he, Brothers. He was loving it, man. I trained with him for a long time in Venice. He used to pick me up in a little Volkswagen. I used to live in Santa Monica. He used to, he, he used to, he used to pull up in a little old Volkswagen. I used to jump, go downstairs, meet him. Couldn't even get in the fucking car. And we went to the fucking gym. That's the same Volkswagen good. that they probably went to Ferrigno's uh, father and bought the weights with, right, John? Dude, they, lost their li <laughs> Dude, they lost their license. I used to give them fucking rides home, both of them two. Yeah, they were, they were crazy. I, they I love were those fucking guys. They were fucking crazy fucks. Both yeah, of them. Were. Are they both dead now? No. Peter's uh, alive. He had a Spanish girlfriend, and she used to say, David, he's stronger than you. 
when he used to get so mad. <laughs> I, I, you know, because we, we were training back together. I, do, I was doing like fucking 400 and change on the fucking seated rows, right? And then I was killing him. I, but he, he loved training with me. He just he you know loved that challenge. You know how many you'd have now with social media? Oh, my you God. Could, oh, yeah. It's a different era, bro. You'd, ah. you'd be able to... You'd have like five million people watch you from around the yeah. world. Do the, oh, do the yeah. Bro, Georgia, we used to have the whole fucking neighborhood, all the kids through the cyclone. I don't know if you've ever been to Venice Gold's there. They had like a cyclone fence yeah. up. I was there. And they had a all, all the all the kids in the neighborhood used to watch me and Dave train in the fucking they, gym. They had a schoolyard <laughs> fence covering yeah. the, the back yeah. where you open up yeah. the fucking door. Exactly. Was, they, they had the schoolyard fence. You see yes. them fucking looking in the fucking. Yeah, the yeah. They used to they used to watch. Yeah. Man. The big back of, bay, the bay door all the way in the back. Yeah. In the back. I, I yeah, thought right. that was a pro. They, 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 <laughs> those two training together were, those were some incredible workouts. You Dude, did. I saw Victor yeah. Richards. I saw Mike Christian go after Victor Richards. And R Victor Richards was on the other side of the fence. And Mike Christian took a step like this. And he, Victor stepped off the fence like this. Because Mike Christian was a bad dude. And he was pissed off at him. He told him, watch what happens. You come in this fucking gym like that. He was he was crazy. Mike, Mike would have climbed that fence in two seconds. John, yeah, I mean, John, you know, one you, time, you remember the back in the back? One, there? John, one time I was straight. Me, uh, it was me and Dave and uh, Billy Smith Thunder from uh, the Gladiators. Yeah. I remember Billy. Billy. I know Billy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. four hundred twenty-five pounds, six four. Billy was and Jimmy yeah. Quinn too. And Jimmy Quinn and we were all yeah. training legs together one day, man. Was it was like man. a fucking show. And you don't I'm even train you, legs. These fucking phones. Huh? Yeah, you, I don't, you don't even train even legs. legs. No. When they were in there training, him, the Barbarians, and Billy Smith and Jimmy Quinn, you had to walk to the other fucking room to find a 45. All the, <laughs> they were using all the plates. <laughs> we had we had 40 fucking plates on the fucking gym. We had we had 10, 10 on each side. Then we put a, an Olympic bar and loaded another 10 on each side. And we were fucking were doing nuts. leg press. Nowadays, they would the kick you out of the gym if you did that probably, yeah. The fucking machine was creaking when I unlocked it and I was lowering it. You heard the fucking the, the rack going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's something. That's something that he never thinks of. Is that that bench that he put a thousand pounds on? That was never meant to hold a thousand right. pounds. No, right. It was a really no, fucking no. bench with the two stations, the yeah. two pipes. No, don't don't, give, don't, don't give remember they had the power bench. rack. The bar is like bending yeah. like this. They had to put duct tape on the end to hold the plates on. <laughs> and he gets under that thing. That bar could have snapped in half. It could have. Who knows insane. what could happen? They put. They load up these leg presses with three tons, and and they start. They don't think that yeah. maybe. No, you know what it. You know what it is, John. I got to break. You know, you know what it is, John. Crashing down. Yeah, John. I tell you what it is. You know. You know. You know why we didn't care back then. It was the fucking youth, man. You know, you know, what, it, what's, what's, you, a what's, yeah, a yeah, what's a you? What's a you? What's a you? It's the fucking youth. You don't care. You know, you just yeah, load you it up and you go. You don't give a shit. Yeah, shit. <laughs> That's why they recruit the 18 year olds to go to war because they don't give a fuck. They get their rifle, they go. You know what I'm saying? John, don't you remember that fucking the power rack that the barbarians said? It said barbarian. The said fucking barbarian thing, right like, six yep. inch fucking steel, like around. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That, that fucking power. Dude, nothing could break that. That could hold up a, a fucking train. They could use that under the L. It's all up the trains. You know what I mean? You know, but, when you were talking about Hammerstrap before, Dave, I almost got a contract with them. I went up I went up to Chicago. I met the Bengals, man, the football players. The fucking head coach introduced me to the team. And well, I had these videotapes, and I was letting them watch it. I almost got a contract with Hammerstrap. They were involved with the Bengals at that time. Oh, uh, really? I forget the name of the guy that recruited me in there, yeah. But, you're, but you, you know what, John? Jim? You're 100% huh? right. You're 100% right. The insanity of the weight they put on these machines. Think about a leg press machine. You get under this thing, there's 3,000 pounds in there, and you lower the weight. Now, if your leg gives out, I don't care how many guys you got surrounded at, no one's stopping that sled from coming down all the way. Now, I know you have the pins to stop it, but 3,000 pounds is blowing past those pins. You could die, basically, you know, and know what we yeah, didn't those, care those, back those then. Those wells ain't gonna hold. Those no. little fucking wells ain't gonna hold. No. And, and these, these guys are pinning forty fives to the weight right. stack. Right. You know, oh yeah. Not not just the front of the weight stack, but the, the back of the weight yeah. stack too. They got forty fives. <laughs> 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 people and girls sitting people on it. People standing on, on the it. Chains. Yeah. The, the Gold's Gym in Venice did not have enough weight. The machines did not go up high enough. 
in the mecca of bodybuilding. <laughs> the machines didn't go up high enough for him, Quinn, to Billy Smith, the Barbarians, yeah. Victor Richards. That's how with these fucking Victor Richards. Dude, I've seen Victor Richards throw around weight in there that was sick. Great. Dude, he, he's another one. He would curl with like 315. I mean, it was fucking we should, crazy. We should get Billy on the show, Dave. Yeah, we, we should. Try to get him on the show. We got to reach out. John, you know him, right? I knew him. Yeah. yeah. He's... I knew him too, but you're yeah. talking fucking 1980. I'll find what? him. I'll fucking find him. He's probably on Facebook. Shit. All right, I got, I got to wrap this up, guys. Um, this was a fun show. You know, I, I, I think that the, the, the Arthur Jones clip cracks me up. I only wish that I could have interviewed Arthur Jones before he died because that guy probably has more stories. Yeah. I know a guy who knew him personally. I'm going to get this guy and I'm going to interview him because I, I think the Arthur Jones stories that he probably knows are probably legendary. That no, It's like they're hidden from the world. I was talking to this guy on the phone, and he was telling me some Arthur Jones stuff. I mean, Arthur was was embedded in Hollywood, too. He knew all those Hollywood stars. He was dating all the women and everything like that. Arthur knew, was exposed to everything, from Hollywood to bodybuilding to the reptile world. I mean, he had his hands in everything, and he made a lot of money. He made a lot of money. I think he lost a lot of money, too, you know, before he died. But, he did. Right? I think he was broke when he I died. I think I'm he was, sure. too. Something happened. So. Hey Dave, we gotta get those. I'll be, I'll be broke when I when I die too. You're broke Greg. now. You're broke <laughs> now. At a boy. I'm waiting for you to move down here, and and, and I'm gonna build you. He's a team. not leaving. I can make a fucking hell of a sauce in a meatball, though. I'm That's like, right. Boy, I'm, Jim, I'm waiting for all the these guys. He, look, Mr. Look G asked me for a real estate today. agent the other day. So, Jimmy, you need some sausage and peppers. Forget no. the hot dogs. Uh, Jimmy, forget, about got... the, forget about the COVID test. I should just go get a fucking sauce of pepper here. Okay, Jimmy, right. you don't need the COVID test. You gotta kill anything. Go get the COVID test. You don't need oh, the COVID test. Oh, we, right. we, didn't, we didn't hear Mr. G's political platform. That he's I don't want to hear it. Can we save it for next time? Yeah. You gotta <laughs> dress up again, though. Oh, wait. Jimmy, you gotta, you gotta go live on Instagram with your workouts. All right, that's that that's business one on one right now. All right, so you get so you can build up your followers. All right, people can watch you. Start taking your workouts, get 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 one of those tri little tripods to the phone, and go live on Instagram. Live on Instagram with Jimmy the Bull. I you will. do it, George. Workouts. I will. If Don't you want, watch if it you want, unless you can handle it. If you want some jumbo Paloma cookies, Mr. Potts Protein .net. Mr. G probably has Eat some. The some keto cookies right up there. there for sale and uh, the right Jumbo Palumbo cookies. Check them out. <laughs> Don't forget the uh, Dave Palumbo thir 53rd birthday sale on SpeciesNutrition.com. Somalize $29.99. If you spend more than $60, you get a free Species Nutrition t-shirt and free shipping it on orders over $100. For now, we can, guys, we're out of time. Happy birthday today. Can we all sing that? Sing happy birthday. Take us out. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, 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 birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Flawless. How old are you now? Dave, how old are you now? 59? I'm now 53. Don't age me. 53. I hope I'm here next year. Yeah. 55 years ago. Jimmy, we're all over 60. Fucking baby, man. It's a fucking baby. He's a young kid. Baby, I I, I need to be younger to control you lunatics, uh, you old you old uh, Italians that are all angry and uh, right. I gotta keep, hey, Dave, I gotta keep this together down? as a coherent hey, force. You know, where do we all come down there? Oh You're gonna boy. build a big gym. You'll be he's ninety by the time fucking, you guys get down here. He's gonna here, put probably. a wall around his house. You know? <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, uh, have a great week. We'll see no you next time anyone. and uh, check out MrPotsProtein.net for all your cookie needs. I uh, love you guys. Love you, man. I love you, bro. Love you guys. Don't pass any kidney stones before next week, bro. Good luck with the test. I love you guys. Thank man. you.